Hi everybody, I'm back again because I love to draw birds. And today um, we're going to draw one of my personal favorite birds, the hummingbird. Now the hummingbird's only around in the summer, um, so you can't see one right now in the winter, but wait till summertime and you keep your eyes open for the beautiful, beautiful hummingbird. So you're gonna need, just as a reminder, you're gonna need a pencil and you're gonna need some type of marker and uh, coarse paper. So grab your supplies and let's draw a hummingbird. This is another really easy one to draw. I'm gonna tell you, you can't really draw one from life uh, sitting at your hummingbird feeder because they do not sit still for uh, even a second. So luckily I, I was able to study some people who are excellent photographers that were able to capture some hummingbirds. So again, you're taking your pencil and you're drawing your guide, which is another oval and a round shape for the head. And then you get to get your marker and you're gonna follow the circle around. You're gonna follow the oval. Follow the other circle and the oval. Well, it doesn't look like a hummingbird yet, but it will. Make a point here at the bottom. Now, this guy's got the longest, skinniest beak of all the birds that we've drawn. Got a little eye here. I really love the hummingbird tail. It flares out. See how that is? And you may want to put in straight lines for that beautiful, beautiful tail. Now, here's his wings. All I do for hummingbird wings are, it's kind of like a foot, the skinny football shape. Now, just show a little bit of feet here. Now, if you really wanted to get full of detail, you can put some lines to make it look like it's really moving fast and even draw some lighter ones. See how that makes it look like the hummingbird's wings are actually moving? Now, one thing great about uh, hummingbirds, by the way, here in Minnesota, we get the ruby-throated hummingbird more often. So right here where I've drawn the shape, I'm gonna color it in dark here, but if you were coloring this at home, you would wanna color it red, uh, ruby red for his neck. However, in researching hummingbirds, I noticed that they come in every color. So you could do an orange hummingbird. You could do a, well, green. This one would be green with the red um, ruby throat. But you, if birds, um, hummingbirds all over the world are all different colors. So if you wanted to make it a purple hummingbird or a sparkly hummingbird, do whatever color you want. Just be sure it's got this round head and that long beak. And you've got a very cute hummingbird. Now, um, I found the hummingbird really interesting. First of all, it's the only bird that can fly backwards. And it's the only bird that can hover. So he, can, he or she can hover in place where other birds cannot do that. I think that's a really good skill for him. They're, they can flap their wings 53 times per second. Not minute, second. That is fast. Um, attracting hummingbirds is super fun because you can hang uh, hummingbird feeders and, with nectar in it and they will come. But you could also plant some beautiful flowers. Um, there's been research about hummingbirds that say they are very attracted to a red, red color. Um, because hummingbirds actually can't smell anything. They are attracted by color, so they seem to go more often to a red flower. So you might want to think about that when you're planning your garden this year. Now here's what I found really fascinating about the hummingbird. When fall comes, they just don't head down to Iowa from Minnesota or, you know, the next state over. They fly all the way to Mexico or Central America. You know, that's a really long way for a little guy to fly. And here's the thing about them is they don't fly all night. They stop 
you know, they like imagine a tree as a hotel. They stop in a tree, sleep, get up the next morning and fly a little farther. So they winter over in Mexico and then when it's spring they fly on back. Um, maybe this year I'll join them. So their very favorite flowers are foxgloves, cardinal flower, bee balm, jewelweed, and my personal favorite flower of all time, the lupin. So keep your eyes out. This is something to look forward to this summer, is attracting beautiful hummingbirds to your backyard. So it was fun to draw a hummingbird, wasn't it? Like I say, they're really hard to draw from life because they don't sit still long enough to draw. So, um, but they sure are fun to watch. So after the hummingbird, after they've wintered over in Mexico, they're going to be flying back here to Minnesota and they're going to want nectar. So they're going to, you're going to have to be sure you're on top of getting your, your nectar feeders ready for them. And also what's really fun in your yard is you can research some native plants and plant some of those in your yard so they can enjoy the nectar from the feeder and the beautiful flowers um, that you planted that they would be attracted to. And you know, guess what? You're going to be entertained too because you're going to be watching the, the beautiful hummingbirds on your feeder and you get to enjoy the beautiful native plants that are in your yard. Okay, so with all the birds that we've drawn, we do want to think about the safety of our birds. And here's some examples of how to keep our birds safe. Oftentimes, if windows are super clean and there's nothing on them, the birds can fly right into them. You've seen that happen. I don't like that to happen to birds. So what we've done here at the Isaac Walton League is we have the shape of a bird here and it's adhered to the window. And if you don't like this, the bird shape, there's also this really nice um, shape of a leaf. And that stops the birds from flying right into the window. Also, here's a fun craft that we did here with kids at the Isaac Walton League. It's called a God's Eye. You can make a bunch of God's Eyes and hang them in your window. And that'll also protect our birds from hitting the glass. So look, check over your house and be sure that your windows have something on them so our poor birds don't fly into them. Thanks.